Okay, let's talk about something really important that nobody else discusses. And it's kind of always in reference to Zeiss, but it has nothing directly or specifically applicable to Zeiss. Um, let's talk about the micro contrast. What does it mean? And we've all recognized it, even though we haven't given it, most people haven't given it a name. Um, let's give a couple examples. Um, you have a decent contrast shot, and you have a woman's hair over here, and the back of her head is in shadow. And you'll notice on it a, a decent or a kind of crappy lens. It's like, well, you think there's something wrong with your sensor, or maybe you didn't expose it properly. I mean, of course, this is what fill flash is for with the crappy lenses, so you can even out the tonal range between the light and the dark areas. You notice that they're uh, like the back of someone's hair that isn't lit, which, of course, that's a vicarious experience for me since I have no hair. Uh, is muddy. It like has a, a very, 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 very slight milky haze over the hair that uh, is in the shadows. And this is what, you know, for many years uh, the use of fill flash was for, to even out the tonal range between what was captured, like her face in the light and whatever she's doing, dancing, and the back of her head. So you have a nice even tonal range in the shot. And of course, that gets boring after a while. Not only is it compositionally invalid to a certain extent, I mean, it People, it has been far, far overdone. It's like, well, you you got muddy spots over here where you've got, uh, you know, uh, low separation and tonal range, and we need to use a fill flash so that everything is nice and vibrant. You don't have that milky, dull... You uh, emphasize the word dull. Okay, dull. You know, you've all seen it before. Or, like, if you have this table, and it's uh, darkly lit in here, and say there's, like, a, a clay pot that's like an 18% gray, and like a clay cup that's 18% gray. And you have all these little objects here that, while they're different colors, camera doesn't, cameras don't see in color, specifically. I mean, they look for, uh, you know, exposure values and focusing and whatnot. I mean, it all wants to make everything mud, and that's your camera. But what about your lens, and what about what your, capture, your camera captures? Getting that image to pop, and people are like, well, I don't get it. I took a, you know, I use a decent Nikkor lens or whatever, and uh, my image doesn't look like your image, and you're using, you know, uh, an expensive prime, and I'm using a zoom. Like, you're using the 180 millimeter, you know, Nikkor. You're using uh, Carl Zeiss uh, macro planar or 85 millimeter. Uh, uh, Zeiss planar or another awesome one. You know, why why does mine look muddy? When we're talking about micro contrast, we're talking about the lens's ability to differentiate between smaller and smaller details and more uh, that uh, have more and more uh, nearly identical tonal values. In you know, a muddy lens, might capture uh, eight stops of uh, eight stops of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, a light in the in the composition and thirty intermediate tones. A lens with uh, really awesome micro contrast will capture the same eight stops of light doesn't matter if it's black and white or color. And, for example, instead of uh, 30 intermediate tones, this is just an example, it will capture twice that much or three times that much. Depends on what the disparity between the awesome lens is and the crappy lens. And typically the crappy lens is either a crappy lens or just like a zoom, even a high quality. High quality zoom is almost a contradiction. There are, of course, plenty of good zooms, but high quality zoom it's kind of like taught saying skinny fat person, right? I mean, that, ultimately that's the truth. These, this is one of the many reasons why prime lenses are better. But also the construction, the nature of aspherical elements, ED glass, that there are a lot of factors and it'd take forever to talk about it. But, you know, this is important in, a, in an incredible number of shots. You know, the, the muddy lens that captures, uh, you know, the eight stops of tone and the 30 intermediate tones, you have this milky mud where there's no separation. That actually adds... Now, uh, the depth rendition is one thing based upon element count and other factors, but there's also perceived depth uh, wherein, like, say you take a black and white portraiture of someone's face where there is bad tonal rendition. I'm not talking about depth rendition, but bad tonal rendition on the skin tones of the objects such that it has a low tonal, uh, uh, low tonal uh, composition on the capture of the shot that you're acquiring with the crappy lens, the crappy zoom lens, and so the perceptual depth of that portraiture, irrespective of the actual optical depth of the lens, if it's, even if it's a low element count, it's a low element count crappy zoom lens or a low element count crappy prime lens, that it isn't captured because it doesn't have the ability to capture micro contrast of the various tonal 
um, uh, gaps uh, between the, the various stops of light, whether that be in color or uh, black and gray. And nobody talks about this, but you've all seen it. You've seen someone's hair, or you've seen like a really low contrast scene. It's like, well, that's kind of neat, but you know, I got an awesome camera and a decent lens, but it just all kind of looks muzzy, muddy and has like a, a very, 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 very fine milky haze over it because, you know, there's, there's, they're all kind of the same tonal range and. Uh, You've all seen it, and some people, you know, don't even register it in their minds. They're kind of so used to seeing it in lenses like uh, the Sigma Art Lens series has horrible micro contrast. It's awful, and uh, crappy uh, zoom lenses, or even really good zoom lenses, have a bad micro contrast. This is, you know, the lens's ability to uh, pick up on the fine detail between very similar uh, colors, such as the gradation in skin or textures on uh, different uh, dis distant uh, structures and uh, capturing uh, high range tones is very, very important. Um, and this is insanely important in doing a black and white photography. If you're going to do a conversion, you're going to shoot everything in raw and color and do a black and uh, white conversion. And you notice like, you know, geez, what I saw there and what my, you know, I did a 14-bit raw file, then I converted to black and white, but all of a sudden it looks kind of muddy and dull and bleh. And if you're going to do a black and white photography having, you know, a really good lens like a, an awesome Nikkor Prime, or like a, a Zeiss uh, Planar, a Distagon, or uh, a Distagon or a Planar, or I don't know how the new Mildes are. They're not out yet. I mean, that's really, really important, and uh, that adds the perceptual depth and uh, rendition of the actual image. And I refer, I always called it uh, mud. I called it a muddy lens, even though it may be perfect. But you see, sharpness isn't everything. This is one thing that pisses me off. People like, oh, how sharp is the lens? How sharp is the lens? How sharp is the? Shut the hell up! Damn! You know, sharpness is important, but ultimately, you know, I'd rather have a lens like the 24-70 is an expensive damn uh, zoom lens that all wedding photographers use. But ultimately, it's not that damn sharp of a lens. You know, but it has other attributes like saturation, micro contrast, and it actually has uh, um, other characteristics that make it a perfect wedding lens, even though it isn't insanely sharp. It's also fragile, but it's an incredible lens, and they've sold a bazillion of them. Of course, they have a new version coming out of, out of it now, but uh, this is something you have to consider, and uh, you all have seen pictures like that. You can go look at a Flickr page on uh, the Sigma art series, which are just horrible, crappy lenses. Now, some people like what they put out. I mean, art is subjective. Yeah, okay, I get art is subjective, but there really ain't too many people, yeah, I said ain't too many people, that like muddy images. You know, it's like, well, it's muddy, I'll add some fill flash and I'll fix it. Well, here's an idea. How about an awesome lens like this one, for example? There's many examples, but I just happen to have this one in front of me. One that I don't need the fill flash, but it will capture all those little tiny intermediate tones that the other lens won't capture. Okay, you've seen these images like, ooh, that's why I like a Carl Zeiss lens, or ooh, that's why I like this uh, Nikkor 50mm Prime, or ooh, that's why this 200mm F4 Prime is awesome, or ooh, this 135mm Prime AIS is incredible. Um, it's not only the low element count that adds the actual uh, rendering of the image in its actual depth, but also the perceived depth because of the tonal gradation that is captured. Now, unless you've got a really ancient old camera, your sensor, even if it's a Canon, and even if it's like a 3000 or 5000 series a Nik uh, Nikon DSLR, is able to capture those tonal ranges. But if you've got a muddy lens, I call it muddy lens, but you know, other people are calling it micro contrast. It doesn't matter what the hell you want to call it. It is the lack of those intermediate tones that are not translated into the composition that is eventually, uh, of course, written uh, to your SD card or a compact flash card. These lenses with these micro, micro contrasts, you know, capturing the exact same stops. And this isn't a crappy lens. I'm just going to say, well, this is a crappy lens. This is a great one. They're both capturing the same amount of stops, but this one's only capturing, you know, 40 intermediate tonal values, and this one's capturing 120 or 300. You know, just arbitrary number. Like if you're taking a picture of like a lump of like uh, of uh, driftwood on the beach, it's like, whoa, crap. This is going to make an awesome uh, shot. You uh, you take a picture with a crappy old prime lens, of which there aren't too many, but there's certainly plenty of them out there, or, or a zoom even an expensive zoom, and you go to convert the 14-bit RAW file into black and white, it's like, ooh, this looks muddy and crappy, you know, what the hell happened? I shot it in max, it didn't look this way when I shot it, it looked pretty good in color, but now that I did the black and white convert, 
Tonal range is missing. It's absent in the shop. Um, so start thinking and start looking at when you're looking at pictures uh, the micro contrast that's present, and ignore it if it's like uh, someone that's done flash photography because someone, you know, they they may not be missing the muddy areas, but you know, di discontinue those shots and start noticing that, uh, you know, in the shadows what. It's not that you know your sensor is not grabbing it. It's that uh, your lens uh, doesn't have the ability to translate that to the back of the sensor. Doesn't have the ability to capture that micro contrast. Now there are some crappy DSLR sensors that don't have micro contrasting ability, and they just have a muddy rendition. But those DSLRs have pretty much uh, gone by the wayside. But everyone that currently exists now has uh, different levels of that. Obviously, so as is the case. You know, you got the Panasonic, Ayi Matsushita, and there's Panasonic, and Sony, and Toshiba, and there's actually two other uh, companies that are making sensors, but they've all kind of come within, you know, an inch of each other, so they're very, very close. So, this is what you understand, and, you know, start taking a look at shots and taking into consideration micro contrast and the lack of, or the presence of, the tonal range that really makes the images just go, wow. It just pop and make you think, wow, this is incredible. I did not use any flash photography in this shot, but like her hair that's in the dark here, I can see all these, I can see like a hundred different shades of gray or black or whatever her hair color, a hundred different little shades of brown because she has brown hair, you know, whatever the case may be. So start noticing that stuff. The fact that most people don't talk about this at all is uh, kind of mind-blowing to me. So anyway, catch you later.